So it turned out it was completely unimportant, as expected. Gosh, some people just have no manners. Sunday morning people, Sunday fucking morning. So last time, because I decided might as well start a new video, and actually I stopped the recording anyway, so yeah, new video. Herp derp. Last time we discovered that Madeira actually has fish on it, and that we have no air, because we had a marvellous air, and then he went and died, because of course he did. Rip William. So let's continue on, and hopefully our multitude of royal marriages will get us another heir soon enough. Poland, I'm still not interested. Fuck off. They're just never going to stop asking. They're going to be like, hey, do you want an alliance? Forever. No, I don't. I want you to do stuff all on your own, and I know if I have an alliance with you, you'll just make me fight Russia. And while I'm sure that I will fight Russia at some point in the distant future, today is not this day. So what have we got here? Some sort of propaganda text is circulating in the court about Hadrian and how he's a ruthless power monger. Hmm, <laughs> those bastards. So we can lose a bit of stability or we can take a diplomatic power hit. I'm gonna take the diplomatic power hit, actually. I don't care. I think, I think that we'd want to embrace this reputation that would perhaps make people fear us. I think we'd want to, you know, go along with that, make sure that people were sufficiently afraid of our mighty empire. On the other hand though, we do need to build stuff and things, so let's continue building courthouses with our admin power because I still don't want ecumenism. The game is just, it's like, no, you must have it. And a carnal sin, ooh, this one can be good, it depends. Could her lips be any redder? Doubtful. Hollow in the back of your mind echo the cautioning words of priests and preachers. Is this what the sermon spoke of, the devil in a woman's body and the temptation of the flesh? Strange as devils go, this one looks a lot like an angel. Either way, you'll have to bring this up in your confession on Sunday. The need of an heir goes before the need of forgiveness. We can get a 3-3-4 with a weak claim. Lose some papal influence that we don't have, but increase the reform desire. That's a problem. Or we can grab two papal influence. That 334 is actually not bad. How old is Hadrian? I forget. He's 34. I'm gonna say no. Nope, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I'm gonna say no, because we've got time. If Hadrian was like 50, I would totally jump on that. But at 34, he's got time to have a new heir. Our army's Elan strikes fear into the enemy. Our policy of choosing the offensive over the defensive has led to tales about the Elan of our armies. Charge. Very much so. Alright, so. Continuing with the whole courthouses thing, we should probably make sure that this whole area is pacified. So let's have some courthouses. Give me all of the courthouses ever. And then we'll start building up. Ooh. Conversion successful, we have papal influence again, except we don't because we never do. Congratulations, place that I can't remember the name of. Terek, good job. Well done. You should feel awfully proud of yourselves. And now we'll continue with the whole building thing. So we'll make sure that all these places are cortified, and then we'll start building uh, more fortresses and such. Well, they're not actually fortresses right now. I can't remember what they're called. Tenails or something like that is the current level that we can build. We'll keep building those along the outer borders of the empire to keep out the riffraff. Unfortunately, we don't get to have like a, an actual great wall, so we just have to be kind of happy with what we've got. But on the other hand, Greece and Macedon and all these wonderful places down here have almost all got courthouses except for these two spots. So that pleases me greatly. What are they? Yes, they are Tenails. So let's continue building them up here. We'll fortify the Crimea. And such around there. Um, we might as well fortify Ile de France, seeing as this is the capital. And... Why not? Normandy, very important. I can't remember if I decided which one was going to be the spot for our Admiralty. I'm thinking Normandy might actually be a good spot for an Admiralty. I'm thinking it might be. We'll fortify it up. Bribing the Gem. I think that's how you say it. Polish people, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's called the Gem. Winning an election is often a matter of knowing whose palms degrees a number of our dynasty, a member of our dynasty. 
is currently the leading candidate to succeed to the throne. So we've had this one before, we can reward them generously and we'll get some extra support, or we can send them home empty handed and lose prestige. And you know me, I'm never losing prestige, it's very important. We will reward their support generously. Have these 3000 odd ducats. They're like buckets, except not as good. Okay, so how is Madeira going? Madeira is going quite well, actually. How long until they're done? Nice. So there's 582 people here currently, a thousand are needed to create a city, and we've got a 54% chance of getting extra settlers. I like it. People are sampling new religions. Our policy of encouraging innovation and free thinking have led to our people taking a more relaxed attitude to the state religion. Let them or reverse course. Well, missionary strength is always good, so I'm going to reverse course, even though it increases our technology cost. We're far enough ahead that that shouldn't matter all that much. I mean, Poland is probably up near us. Yeah, 14, 14, 12. I think, if I remember correctly, we are 14, 14, 14. Yes. But that's okay. They're expected to be about our level because they started out westernized. So I'm okay with that. We'll still stay ahead of them on military technology and other such things, so it's not that bad. Although they'll achieve parity in at least one thing. How long until military technology goes up again? Ah, perfect. 612 to go to the next thing. And we'll just save up our... Yeah, we'll just save our admin... To, actually, just all the monarch points. We'll save them to get the next, uh, the next level of technology. We're far enough ahead. Occasionally, hostilities would erupt between opposing military schools. That is wonderfully vague. Text. Thank you. I, I feel so much more enlightened. Attack is always the best option. Lose one stability, or lose one stability and get increased defensiveness. I'm gonna go with the attack. I would really like it if we didn't have to spend more money. Well, it's not money, it's more points on boosting the damn stability. 137 to get the next one. That's not too bad. That's not terribly bad. It's going to slow down our admin tech increase a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Oh. Oh no, this is a tricky choice. Increase the settler amount. Increase the settler amount, or go for the next technology level. Well, what does the next technology level actually let me get? It will let me get... It doesn't really say there. Uh, level 15, so Carracks and Caravels, increased naval maintenance costs, better navy morale. Oh, global settler increase of 15 for level 15. Okay, we're going to hold off then. The ideas are good, but that's, that's only five more. And while the increase of cost will go up for our... Ooh, is this military tech? It is. Gimme, gimme, gimme. We can now get Charge Infantry and Mauritian Infantry. The size and depth of the Spanish Square gives it staying power, but made it slow and cumbersome to maneuver on the battlefield. It also led to a large percentage of troops being inactive during battles. Morris of Nassau, the start holder of the Netherlands, reduced the total number of men in the formation to make it more mobile and reduced its depth so it maintained the same firepower and shock values. Excellent. And Statesman Tiberius Jovian. No, not Jovian. Alright, well, I guess we'll have to replace him with the Navigator, because really the other ones aren't all that great. Well, I mean, they're okay, but I want the plus three. Give me. Okay. So now we can change our Tertio Infantry to something else. We can go for Mauritian Infantry or Charge Infantry. I'm gonna go with Mauritian. And... Yeah, we're gonna hold out for Diplomatic Tech. It's not that much further along. It's only 486 power, so that's okay. We'll hold out. And we've successfully made the Crimea part of the Catholic denomination. Hooray. Good job, us. Actually, does that mean we can build them a fort? Because if we can build them a fort there, I will be happy. We can do it. Alright, how's our fleet going? So we need a few more... Well, we only need three more galleys. Are they galleys or cogs? I can't remember. Cogs, I think. No, rigs. Alright, well, let's build one, two, 
and three, so we're all prepared for when we go sailing over there, and we'll get these people under control. So we're at religious unity of 120% out of possible 125. Things are going swell, and everybody is, well, that's excellent. Those numbers are fantastic, because, you know, you guys remember at the beginning of the, the series, those numbers were up in like a thousand, a thousand plus months, or never. 47 is pretty goddamn good compared to all of that. And now we can get diplomatic tech, hooray. Carnal sins again, well, what's the choice? 1, 2, and 6, no, no, forgive me, father, for I have sinned. <laughs> that, that's a bad, that's a bad number. I mean, that 6 is nice in military, but 1, 2, and no. The 3, 3, 4 was better. Galleons, that should be galleons, shouldn't it? I would imagine. Galleons were created. Oh, oh. Just to say it is. Galleons were created by lowering the forecastle and elongating the hull. These changes in design improved the speed and stability of the ship, which was of vital importance for galleons to serve as better gun platforms. Extra colonial range, extra settler growth. Very, very important. And we're up to 66% on Madeira's... Um, I, I'm just going to call it Madeira. I, I don't know what it's actually called when it's got the accent on there, so it's just going to be Madeira. Be happy. And a discovery has spread. What discovery? Another little bit of the Timurid realm, because we totally need to know all about that. Damn it! could we please have an heir? I mean, that was the whole point of marrying all over the place, remember? So we had a, we had a plus 30% chance to get a new heir. Come on, guys. How are you doing? Well, that's good. She's not great, but at least she's up there and she's out here. Yeah, she's of our dynasty. Which will be good because we can get it back from these guys, those damn bastards. My Imperator, our colony in that place has grown enough to become self-sustaining. Excellent. And this truly is excellent because it means that now I can actually go to somewhere I can pronounce the name of, the Azores. So let's head over there. We need to get aboard ship. You do have a conquistador still, yes? Yes. Excellent. Go forth. Oh, come on. I totally clicked the fleet. I totally clicked them. Don't you be sassing me. And I need you to go find out about this place. I need you to go find out about this place before the ships sink. Thanks. Gosh. How rude. Alright, you can go camp out over here at the Canaries. And we will dispatch a settler when I can click on the damn icon. There we go. The Azores, you are animist. No longer. We'll be spreading our good Norman and Catholic values. How's Russia doing? Are they in a war with anybody? No, really. They're actually doing pretty well. I'm pretty impressed that they managed to keep up with Poland. I'm kind of disappointed, though. Because I would really like them to westernize. But then again, if they westernize, then the Timurids will westernize, perhaps China will westernize, pretty much everyone will be westernized by the end of the game. So, maybe it's a good thing that it's taking them a while. Maybe I shouldn't prod them. Trade expansion. Our policy of free trade is allowing our merchants to expand our trade. Excellent. So we lose some spy defense, which is a bummer, but it could be worse. And we gain an extra 10% national trade income. Hooray. These things are good. And we finally, well, we finally made Dara, wherever it is, over here. Yes, I totally knew that. We finally made it Catholic. Hooray. Go team. Oh, those numbers went back up. <laughs> that's, a, that's annoying. I'm guessing some modifier just ran out. That is irritating. So let's continue building these fortresses. Well, they're not really fortresses, are they? They're tenails. Star forts. Those are kind of fortresses. We need to make sure that this place... Whoa, whoa, yes! Anastasia! Hell yeah! A 516. I'm okay with that. Even if the diplomacy hit is going to be a bummer, I'm okay with Anastasia being our next heir. So let's fortify all of these places. And she probably came around at about the right time as well, because he's going to be, what, about 40? Almost. 38. That's pretty good. 
So by the time he hits his 50s, she'll be coming up to about the time where she won't have to worry about having that much of a regency if he dies suddenly. So I'm okay with that. And we should get her on the throne at a fairly young age. Which is also not a bad thing. So that'll be two Anastasias. That's interesting. I put in um, custom names for the emperors and empresses, but I did leave a lot of the original Byzantine names in there too, and Anastasia was one that came up a lot, which surprised me. Irene, though, Irene and Anna, not so much, but Anastasia is a really, really high number in that particular table. God knows why. Alright, so... Let's see, do we really need to reinforce our armies? I don't think so. I think we're pretty good, actually, on the whole army front. I mean, the Legion in Venice does kind of need a little beefing up, I guess. And the African Legions do kind of need a little beefing up, I suppose. It could be worse. I think I'll leave it for now. How, how far away from our force limit are we actually? Oh, do I want to do that, or do I want to hold out for tech? kind of want to hold out for tech. A textile manufactory. But what does it actually give me? Does it give me anything else interesting? Does it say? It does not. Uh, it doesn't give me a new idea group. Pretty much all it gives me is this. I would rather have the stability go up so that we can convert provinces faster. Then we can worry about the... Uh... Yeah, there we go. That's much better. Then we can worry about the whole advances in administrative technology, which is probably what the other nations have been doing as well, now that I think of it. They've probably been avoiding administration just to keep the stability up. Which makes sense. So the Timurids, how are you guys doing? You've got a, ooh, you've got a vassal. And you have the mission Conquest of Delhi. Interesting. Border friction between us and Russia, because of course there is. Perhaps the policy change is in order, or put a positive spin on things. Policy change, thanks. They don't need to be, you know, butted up anymore. Let's see now, what have we got that needs to be paid for in diplomatic points? Trade depots. Trade depots are very, very good. Marketplaces too are pretty good. Oh, hello. Bringing in manageable manageable, marriageable women. A pioneer colony is very much a man's place, but as a colony develops, we should look to switch growth from emigration to new births. The colonial company responsible for one of our colonies has arranged for a number of marriageable women, mostly widows, to travel to the colony to see that families are started. Gain 200 population in the Azores. I know it's not what it says there, but that's what it is. French accents be damned. And gain 43 manpower. Pretty good. That might actually put us up to about 500. And fish will be also produced in the Azores, because of course, what else? Yeah, that puts us up to 535 settlers. Well, 531, but then it bumped up again. To the administration or to sow a thousand flowers? Well, this place will give us some extra prestige when it becomes self-sustaining, so I'm going to go with the administration, because we need those points to make sure that we can buy all the technology that we need. Now, trade depots and other such things. I think we're going to go for making marketplaces all along here. And then in Egypt for the rest of the bits that we didn't get before. So let's go for all of these. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, Marcus Raphael. We'll get to you in a minute, good sir. Let's just, let's just do the whole shebang here. Make sure they're all good. Alright, swell. Now, do we have anything else that we can build up at this level? No. We can get some more trade depots, but I'll worry about that soon. I'm actually going to go for shipyards first. So let's build some shipyards along here. And build some dry docks and docks. Actually, no, we should be okay really, for all those things. I'm happy with it. Let's just leave it as is. Marcus Raphael. He's considered by many as one of the greatest living artists of our time. A number of his works rank among the most famous in existence. 
his efforts will be admired throughout the nation, or his reputation will go further than our borders. Damn, if only you'd come along, like, six months ago. Let's go with his efforts shall be admired amongst the nation. Well, throughout the nation. That option, you know the one I mean. How's Palotsk doing, Palotsk? I do like you. You're a little battler, so you are. A new flagship. Our fleet can't be complete without a glorious flagship. A golden figurehead would be nice. Yeah, let's have a galleon. Swell. You can join the Baltic fleet. Flagships are amazeballs. There you go. So how are you doing, Polotsk? How are you? You have a king. King has an heir. Good. I'm, I'm glad that we're not going to inherit you straight away. Can we actually do a royal marriage with you? No, we already did one. Well, that's good. Oh, hello. We can no longer claim that that province that belonged to the Timurids belongs to us. Well, that's good, because I didn't want it anyway. So there. Hmm. Gotland is worrying me. Gotland is annoying me more than anything, actually. Because it's right there, and it's huge, and it could totally take out Norway if I let it. Does that have a truce with Norway? No. It's embargoed by lots of people, though. <laughs> I do like that. Has lots of cast spell eyes on people. Has the conquest cast a spell eye on Norway? It's interesting. Oh, hello. The nation of Fazan has started to become westernized. Where are you? Can I go to you? Oh, right! You're the, uh, you're the little border nation that's right here. Of course, of course! I remember you. They've started to become westernized, so they're not done yet. The heretics of Antioch have been converted to the one true faith. Always good to know. And Medina, you are next on the list. Hmm. So, I really want to know what's going on over here. I mean, like, I, I guess I could always turn off the fog of war because everybody knows what the world looks like, but that takes all the fun away. If I know that Japan exists or I know that Ming has fallen to somebody else right now and, you know, before I go over and visit it, that takes all the fun out of it. We can't do that. Besides, our explorers have to have something to do. Otherwise, there's no point having them. And speaking of explorers, actually... Actually, speaking of explorers and conquistadors, because you don't need to be there anymore. You don't need to be sitting right there. So you know what we are going to do? We are going to raise a new miniature legion. We're going to raise... We're going to create a new template. We're going to call it an expeditionary force. Expeditionary force. There you go. And we're going to have 10 infantry, 5 cavalry, and five artillery. Hell yes. And we're gonna put in all the provinces that we can possibly have to build it, and we're gonna go ahead and build it right here. Perfect. There we go, and you are gonna have Augustus Severin. He's gonna redeploy to the Ninth Fleet. I should probably think up a cooler name for them, but for now Ninth Fleet is fine. I'll need to think up a legion name for these guys who are being created. I don't know. Hmm, I'll have to think about that one. I don't know. Timurids, I really wish you would, you know, do something. Oh no, it's begun. The nation of Arlis has begun to become westernized. How? Are they... oh. Wow, oh, okay, well, when we went to 15, we really got ahead of them. Coffee imports, of course, we are going to have coffee. Duh. What kind of stupid question is that? And the, f the expeditionary force is done. Wow, that took next to no time at all. Titus Probus, you get over here. Okay, we're going to call it... We have to come up with a name. What number are we actually up to in legions? I think it's 28. Maybe. I could be wrong. I probably am. We've got Legion 25. 27. <laughs> I still get a laugh out of that. I can't remember who asked me to name it Legio Hodor, but they did. And there you go. You have a Legio. Um, okay, well, that's 27. It doesn't look like we have a 26. 
I guess maybe 26 got destroyed. No, 26 got obliterated because I couldn't remember what number what number it was. Um okay, well in that case. Vigio 26 it is. Uh, what name should we give it? Legio 26. Did I name anything after Arabia yet? I don't think I did. Did I? No, I did not. Okay, we're gonna call it Arabia. Good job, me. Legio 26 Arabia. Yes? Yes. Perfect. And you are going to go here, and then board ship. Our colony has become self-sustaining. Excellent news. That means that once we get to where we find whatever we find over there, I wonder if we'll actually be able to attack Salon. Because that's what I was thinking of doing, attacking Salon. So let us go find out after we do the admin tech. Hell yes. Textiles were manufactured since time immemorial. The invention of stocking frame. The invention of the stocking frame in 1589 was the first step towards the Industrial Revolution and the beginning of mechanization. This invention would lead to increases in textile production. I know English is the second language of a lot of the people who work for Paradox, but you'd think they'd check that. For plurals and such. Oh well, it's good. They make good games, so they get a free pass. Okay, so, now, even though we discovered that seven years early, hooray, <laughs> now we are headed into Terra Incognita. Show me India. Show me the place where the Timurids came from. This is what you said to go do, people. This is what you said to go do. The Senate has spoken. And so we sail towards India. Hello, Timurids on the coast there. So let's make, let's make sail for here. And hopefully we won't take attrition for a little while. We'll see where we go from there. An influential preacher. Ah. Now, can we can we milk this for anything? What would it cost us? Spend 15 papal influence to gain 10 invested. Okay, we don't have enough, and we wouldn't have enough anyway. So, we will make him a nice bishop. A young devout preacher has spoken out recently about how good our, <laughs> how great our adherence to the teachings of the Holy Father in Rome is. This can only be good for our future. You'll make a nice bishop, son. Off you go. Ooh, we're taking attrition. So your ships can sink, and you can lose the entire expedition if your ships sink here, and it can happen. So let's keep going. Let's hopefully find somewhere that we can make port in. Whoa, 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 whoa. The province of Van has been converted to the One True Faith. Excellent news. Grab Kanak next. So what did we discover? Wow. Vijaya... What? Vijaya Gana? Vijayanagar? Vijayanagar? I, I don't know. Vijayanagar and Gujarat and Baluchistan. I'm probably making a terrible hash of those, but you know what? Live with it. <laughs> uh, live with it. Alright, let's see what we got here. I'm hoping we don't lose any of the ships that we kind of need to sail. Okay, so can we declare war on these guys? Do we do we have a Cassus Belli? No. Okay. No Cassus Belli. Um Geography classes from years ago. Is there any way that we can go that wasn't colonized at the time? Well, actually, that's a stupid question, because it's a video game, it's quite possible that they've changed the history. Uh, if I remember rightly, though, the Moldives are here-ish, and shouldn't be colonized just yet, so if they aren't, we'll grab those. Hell yes. Alright, perfect. So you go ashore, and as soon as they're done with that, you sail back home. Alright, so the Battle of the Maldives was successful, and you can sail back to Jeddah, and we will send our colonists right here. Give me that land. Give me that land, Simon Claudius. Expand the Empire. So what I was hoping to do was take Salon and just, you know, use it, because it's got a, it's got a pass here, a strait that you can navigate with actual soldiers. You don't need boats to go from Salon to the mainland. 
but that also means that it's a fantastic choke point. I was really hoping that we could grab that, but we can't yet. Can we fabricate a claim on it? Uh, no, not dynastic. Fabricate a claim. Has no possible neighboring provinces to fabricate a claim on. That is irritating.